These five transcontinentals and the cargo truck were sent by sea from England to Jacksonville to become the Ford Tractor Power Caravan. At the Ford Training School in Memphis, Tennessee, we worked out the schedule and prepared the program. And then from the 28th of April until the 1st of October 1986, the Power Caravan toured the eastern states of America, from the north of North Carolina down south as far as southern Florida, and then in a circle up to New York State. In those six months, we did 45 shows in 45 different locations. We is us, six from the Borum House demonstration team and two Americans from the training center at Memphis, together for six months of setting up, doing the show, packing up and traveling on to the next location for another unloading, preparing the site, cleaning all the vehicles, doing another show, tearing it all down and traveling on to the next stop. We soon settled into a routine. As soon as we arrived in a town, we made straight for the local dealer who then took us to the pre-arranged site. We then checked to see if it really was usable. Some of them were only just and needed a lot of work to make them suitable. We carried a box scraper to level out rough sites, and if necessary, we'd borrow equipment from the local dealer. If the site was too dusty, we'd try to damp it down with this small sprayer, which was also part of our equipment. Unloading all the equipment, not just the tractors themselves, but all the gear needed to present the show. This aluminium jigsaw made up the grandstands, or bleachers as the Americans call them. They gave us our greatest hassle. They were tedious and repetitious and awkward. There are four of them to be built for each show, and, as well, there were two open-sided marquee tents to keep out the sun or the rain. The trucks and the low loaders had to be moved into position to form a semicircle in front of the seating. We had seven vehicles for the show. We had to drive them, load them, and unload them, for an average of two and a half shows a week. The demo tractors made their exits and entrances from either side of the workshop wagon, which was essential to the running of the show. Because every site was different, at each location we had to be very careful about the way we set up the centerpiece of our show, the push-pull plough. While all this was going on, the working site was being marked out and prepared. This black soil down in Florida it was just like potting compost, infested with nut grass, rather like a cooch grass. It was also infested with snakes. We had lots of snake problems in the southern states. This working site was where the audience would try out the tractors and the implements for themselves. Florida also gave us the worst ring area of the tour. It was really too small for the show and the ground was hard packed tarmac. The sites were decorated with bunting and flags to mark out the gateways and paths to the lunch area and the grandstands. But to really mark our location, this huge Ford balloon was set up each time with a generator to make the electricity to power the fan. At first, this setting up took us a whole day but after a few weeks, we'd clicked into a really slick routine and it would only take about three hours. With those critical American farmers casting a jaundiced eye on us, we had to make sure our plowing was as near perfect as possible. The idea was to do a few practice runs, but sometimes the site was too small for us to put in as much practice as we really wanted. A big hit of the show was the TW35 with a 12-foot heavy draft field cultivator. To improve traction, we fitted an auxiliary weight pack which hung on the front hitch. We had an idea for a stunt with three tractors, and during our spare time we rehearsed the timings and some rather intricate positioning. And in the rare tea breaks, we'd come up with further modifications and better ideas. When we finally got it right, we put it into the show. At around 11 o'clock, the audience would start arriving to talk to each other and to us and have a look at the equipment. As they registered at the reception table, they became eligible for a raffle with prizes donated by Ford and the local dealer. Then came a buffet lunch or a barbecue. The best one was in Florida at the huge Purdue Cattle Ranch. This is where we had an audience of over 500, although the biggest turnout was at a small town in Nebraska. 
Then the product presentation in the ring, with the local dealer making his opening speech and introducing us, looking smart in our dark blue trousers and white shirts, which didn't stay white for long. Jimmy Chester was the MC for all the shows. He's an American member of the North American Sales Organization. And this is the opening parade. The presentation, of course, included some models which were only available in North America. After the parade, the tractors would come back into the ring to be shown off in more detail. We put this 7610 on a scissors lift to demonstrate all its capabilities, the four-wheel drive, synchromesh gear changing, four-wheel engagement on the move, dual power operation, axle oscillation and the front axle turning circle. And to demonstrate Ford's hydraulics, these yellow spray fans were fitted to each spool valve. After a few weeks, we felt the time had come to put our stunt into the show. This was the dynamometer demonstration. We could test the power of the tractor and demonstrate its fuel consumption without going into the field. The finale was quite spectacular. To emphasize front hitch versatility and the rear lifting capacity, we rigged up the TW35 to carry the 6610 on the back, that's 10,000 pounds of lift, and we had the 1710 on the front as a counterweight. The ring show lasted about 40 minutes, followed by an eight minute aerial aerobatic show. Would you believe that that airplane was built in 1967? After the show, you're certainly welcome. Anybody in takers? <laughs> this was the greatest crowd draw of all time. They'd never seen anything like this reversible push pull plow. 14 inch furrows, two on the front and four on the rear. They were making bets that it wouldn't work. If we'd taken the money, we'd be quite rich now. The audience can't wait to get into these tractors and try out the implements, some they'd not seen before. Down in Maryland, the dealer arranged for one of the local farmers to leave some maize unharvested. So in this show, instead of using only tillage equipment, we could show off the tractors with these New Holland forage harvesters. We'd start the tear down as soon after the show as possible, but usually the farmers were still operating the equipment till about five. Then everything had to be dismantled and packed away. This would take until about eight o'clock, and then we'd either go to a motel for the night or drive on to the next location, according to the schedule. We had one week's home leave every two months, and we usually managed to get one day off per week when we tended to hibernate and catch up on sleep. In South Carolina, one of the farmers lent us a house for a whole weekend off. We had to make full use of whatever was offered. Once we had to get cleaned up like this before driving on to the next location. We persuaded the local dealer to leave one of the water tanks with us, which we'd been using to demonstrate fruit tree spraying. We traveled over 15,000 miles during those six months, through Kentucky, Colorado, Alabama, the wheat belts of Nebraska and Iowa, it was in Iowa that the soil structure at one site didn't allow enough traction for the vehicles to move into position under their own power. So everything had to be towed, pulled and pushed into place. In Nebraska, the site had been sown with oats, so we got the mower out and after a while ended up looking like a lawn. In Pennsylvania, there was a good site for the ring, but the demonstration area was like a jungle, full of dense scrub and tall weeds. It took a day just to process it into a usable condition.
At Garden City, Kansas, we had two days rest and three days at the dealership to overhaul and maintain all the equipment, complete servicing of everything. Of course, maintenance and servicing along with repairs went on all the time. We were using and abusing all the equipment quite hard. Even during the show, we were always frantically preparing the equipment ready for its next appearance. Although we travel that enormous distance, we didn't see that much of America. We didn't have enough time. But America saw a lot of us, and I know the farmers in our audiences were very impressed. That alone made the whole trip really worthwhile. We proved that the Borum House demonstration team were better than any others. The Ford Tractor Power Caravan had made a really powerful impact. 